Hello and welcome to a new episode of All Things Aida. In today's episode, we're going to talk about productivity tips with respect to scripting with Aida Python and IDC. We'll be covering high-level productivity concepts and also we'll cover the most important hotkeys so that you can script faster. With that, let's get started. First, let's talk about variables lifetime. So whenever we introduce a variable into IDA Python, it will be available through the global scope. So for example, if we use the CLI here and introduce a variable, let's say x equal one. Now x will be available everywhere in IDA until we restart IDA or basically create a new instance of the interpreter. That variable has been introduced through the CLI in IDA Python. If I open the script window and also introduce another variable y, in the Python language, Y as well will be available to that script body. So now when I run it, I can evaluate Y from here. And now it's available. Similarly, if I have introduced not just a variable, a function, for example, let's say hello here. And then we can also access that from scripts or from the CLI or from anywhere we can enter an IDA Python command. So here, if I type hello, I have it available. Now let's switch to a script. So here if I say, for example, test script, and we can print, for example, x equals and y equals, we should be able to see both of them. What we're going to do is press Alt F7 and load the script. Now it executed, and we have x and y. Now if I open one of the existing scripts, for example, script 1, all it does is simply introduce a variable and prints a message. Script 2 simply prints a variable name and it assumes it exists already. So if we are to access variable 1 from script 2, all we have to do is make sure we run script 1 first and then script 2. So here if we go to script 1 and open the recent script window for example, Alt F9, and pick script 1. Script 1 just printed the message and introduced the variable. Script 2 will simply introduce a function and display a variable that was previously introduced. So here, uh, this is from script 2 and it says what's the variable name. And if we change the variable, so we can now simply increment the variable here since it's available to us through CLI. If I rerun script 2, it's going to pick up the updated variable. Now the same concept applies if we're using IDC. So here if we switch to the IDC language and introduce a variable. So for example, to introduce a global variable in IDC, we have to use the keyword extern. And for example, we can give it the name test. And now we have a global variable. So if I go to the calculator or anywhere where we can enter an expression, we should be able to evaluate that variable. So here we have the variable test. And if I go to IDC and change the value, it's going to be the same story in the calculator. It's going to reflect that value. And as well, same story. If I have a script, for example, hello.idc, and here also I introduce a variable z, for example, and function main, then the same story z will be available throughout the IDC context. So let's run that script. And now I have the output, which says idc's z equal 1, 2, 3. And also now if I go to the calculator, and type z, I should have it. Now, what we can do if we have variables, so here back in Python, we have a script var1. Now, can we evaluate it? So here, if we switch to calculator and type script var1, it's gonna say undefined. Why? Because the default expression evaluator, not with Python. We can switch that by running the IDA Python plugin and passing a special argument to the run method. Just to show you how it is. So in the IDA Python plugin, in the run callback, so what we want, we want to run that plugin and pass one special argument and that argument value is enable xlang or disable xlang. So if we want to enable Python to be the default evaluator for expressions in either kernel, all we have to do is simply call run and pass the value 3 or the value 4. That will help us switch the default expression evaluator. So if I go back, press question mark and type script var1, it's still not the default expression evaluator for Python, but if I switch to Python and run, for example, 
load and run plugin and uh, let's say value 3 here and now 3 is what we said enable and 4 is disabled now we enabled uh, python to be the expression evaluator now i should be able to invoke the expression evaluator type script var 1 and have script var 1 but as well now i won't be able to have the idc functions so if i switch to idc i should not have z unless z was defined in python and they're not connected so here z got the python error now let's see how we can do some kind of hot loading or iterative programming so we can switch here to scripts 3 which is empty a common methodology or pattern is to do the following we can start with a try and we are trying to probe now if a certain variable is initialized so here for example i say version by simply uh, typing that now if the version variable is not defined we're going to simply, or even we can simply start by like that and like that. And here we can put some code. For example, here we can say one time initialization, for example. And we can put some code here for one time initialization. For non one time initialization, what we can do, for example, let's say, assume we had some hooks from before or something installed permanently we haven't spoken about hooks yet but later on once we install hooks for pop-up menu handling and other notification events we will need some kind of persistence and if we want to rerun our script we need to unhook the previous callback hook a new callback and such a pattern can be used where we can for example unhook previous notification and then we can hook a new uh, notification and in the except as well if we are trying to access something here we don't have we can handle uh, directly here if you read some of my code i usually use this concept where we simply probe a variable and keep on incrementing the variable and do some logic here whatever the logic here now we can have a way to know what iteration it is to do cleanup and reintroduce variables or, or functions. One important thing to keep in mind is if we have a function, so for example here, if we invoke hello, it should print hello. So here, if you type hello, you should have hello. This hello will override the previous global instance of that hello object or function. So if I say now here hello equal one two three, of course now I overwrote the function. So this is obvious, but it might not be obvious to you if you see a Python, we can access it from the CLI, from the snippet window, and from a file. So all of those share the same global namespace. Whatever you do in one of those locations will reflect globally. So this is important. Now, what about sharing variables that are defined in plugins? So how can two plugins communicate together? So supposedly we have a plugin here called my plugin, which I deployed in IDA. And this is a very simple modern plugin. It has the default multi flag and plugin descriptor and so on. And in the run method, all we do is simply access var1, var2, which are global variables. This plugin has been deployed in my IDA installation and it should show as my test plugin if i press ok this is var1 and this is var2 which are defined here and the run method of the plugin executed this and if i rerun this plugin it's going to keep incrementing its own variables but the question is how can i access this variable if i say here var1 it's not gonna work why because when we run a plugin this is a plugin installed in ida the plugin will sit in its own module and as well if you want some reference this is explained in expression.hpp file it just simply says that if we are gonna be loading plugins plugins will be for example with underscore underscore plugin and then the plugin name so underscore underscore plugins underscore underscore and so on so this is the module name so now if i want to print var1 from the plugin i can just say var1 or var2 instead i have to first import underscore underscore plugins underscore underscore my plugin and now i access those variables through the module so here var1 or var2 which is a string if i rerun the plugin it will simply increment the variables but we can now re-evaluate var1 to be 3 var2 will get one more exclamation mark so if i had two or three plugins now I know how to access the variables between them. Similarly, some talk between different plugins via a shared module. So for example, you can extend IDA API by simply adding a new variable to it. So here, IDA API.t, for example, 
equal one two three and that now introduce the variable now whatever plugin can access that but of course we the code should run in the proper order first that variable should be defined into that shared module and then somebody else can access it and this is the same thing i did for the snippet manager plugin where i added the ext dictionary inside it i added an object instance of a snippets so snippets is an object and inside it, I also added more methods to, to delete, load, or, or save, and so on. So this is how plugins can access variables among each others. Simply use that convention, underscore, underscore, plugin, plugin name, dot, variable. First, of course, import that module, and now you can access variables between plugins. Now, finally, as I promised, I'm going to share with you important hotkeys. So the first hotkey you would like to mention is the Shift F2 which basically triggers the script command or the script snippet window. So you can create stuff here and usually you can dock it, move it to another monitor, etc. Now, as long as the execute script window is visible, of course we can hit the run, but we don't want to use the mouse. It's going to slow us down. So one way, let's say this does some computation. This is more advanced than a simple message. What we can do, as long as the window is open, we can press Control shift x anywhere in IDA. Let's say we are here in the disassembly view and we want to invoke the active snippet. So this is the active snippet. It's there. This snippet window is open. All I have to do is simply press Control shift x and it re-executes the last snippet. So this is important. So in instead of you using the mouse to move to the window and press run and so on, if you're not planning to change the script, it's good enough. You simply want to re-invoke it. Control shift x and it re-invokes again. It doesn't matter what language, whether it's IDC or Python, as long as this window is open, you can press Ctrl Shift X. Or if you're actively developing as well, you can use the regular accelerator key. So if you're still in that window, you can just simply press Alt and R, for example. To run the script and anytime we are in the snippet window we can press escape to close it now another way for productivity is suppose you are here in either view and you want to jump directly to the cli you can press dot and now you're at the cli you can type what you want and then when you're done without using the mouse you press escape from the cli and it moves the focus back to the previous view so if i was here now if i press dot it's gonna start incrementally searching and that's going to be problematic. So let's, for example, open the snippet window. And I change my mind. I want to jump directly to the CLI. All I have to do is simply press dot, right? But dot is going to be an input. So some windows will not take the dot, will basically handle the dot instead of focusing here. And so usually I use the control dot, which works in all the windows. So let's say we are in the snippet window. I want to go to the CLI. I just simply press control dot. I type what I want. Escape from CLI takes me back to the previous selected window. So escape takes me back to the snippet window. I do some stuff. I want to jump back to the CLI, control dot, type what I want, escape and continue. So now we, we press here as well in the functions, control dot takes us here, escape takes us back. Now let's talk about other hotkeys with respect to the CLI. So the universal way is control dot. Let's press control dot. And now while we are in the CLI here, we can cycle through the registered external languages by pressing either with the mouse, but again, we're not using mouse. We're going to use the keyboard. So all I have to do is press control up or control down to cycle between the languages. So here control down, there's nothing after Python. So control up and we have IDC, Python, and so on. So if we have multiple external languages, without using the mouse control up control down now while in the CLI as well we can use the special hotkey or the special handler I would say that is if we prefix anything with question mark it's gonna wrap it with the help built-in keyword so you might have saw, saw me already doing for example question mark IDA API let's say get uh, bytes for example or get bytes and suddenly I have quick documentation this is the same so question mark and some object is gonna simply wrap it with help and show the doc string. So it's equivalent to help. Another thing with respect to the built-in CLI, we can use tab completion. We can use tab or shift tab. So for example, IDA API dot get underscore and press tab. And we can press tab as much as uh, there are other options. And then shift tab to go backwards as well. So that's a facility as well we can use with the CLI here.
Now, for those who got used to using the snippet window or CLI and so on, but maybe want to use something not built in into IDA. So I have been focusing on showing you built in functionality in IDA mainly. But if you prefer third party plugins, there's a nice plugin from ESET. It's called IPy IDA and it embeds the IPython, which is a nice, more advanced way to script in Python, like notebooks, uh, so to say. And we can bring the, the full facility of ipython into ida by installing this plugin and you will get better completion so here i was showing you press uh, question mark and tab and so on but if we were using ipython or this plugin we'll have a nice way we get hints and better completion coloring and so on so feel free to give that plugin a try if you like something more advanced I have been using QScripts a lot, and if you are not aware of it as well, QScripts is another way to increase your productivity when you're developing with IDA. You can also give it a try. There is a full video on the QScripts facilities. But just quick, what QScripts lets you do is simply focus on your editor, and simply once we invoke QScripts, and say I activate the script, I see this pen icon, it's kind of monitoring that script for changes. And so now you can keep IDA on the side and focus on your script. Anytime you save your script, you will see the result. So here, let's say it like that, added some dots, save it, and it's saved. You don't have to switch to IDA or anything. So that's it for today. We covered the concept of global variables and the lifetime of variables or functions, how to change the default expression evaluator from IDC to Python and switch it back to IDC. We also covered important hotkeys and we covered two third party plugins the ESETS uh, IPython plugin and the QScripts plugin. I hope that was helpful and I'll see you next time. Thank you.